Okay, so for our next unit, we are going to be covering work and energy. And you need to know that energy is the ability to do work. And the unit for energy is called the joule. And when you're trying to abbreviate the joule, you need to abbreviate as a capital J. That is what I need you to write as your unit after any answer that you find when you're calculating your two types of energy, or any type of energy. Now, our two main categories of energy that you need to know, you're probably pretty familiar with them, are kinetic and potential energy. So, when we are looking at our types of energy, we can also describe them based on their characteristics. So if we are looking at mechanical energy, this is the energy of movement. And this movement can be stored or actually in motion. So if it is stored, that is your potential mechanical energy. If it's moving, it's in motion, that is your kinetic mechanical energy. So we have our diver. She is standing upright. She is still. This is where she has her potential energy. She is not yet moving, but now she is moving through the water. She has completed her dive. So this is where she is exhibiting kinetic energy, or the energy of motion. So we have three more types of energy on this slide. We have thermal energy. Thermal energy is also known as heat energy. So anytime you have a fire, that you're warming up to, or a bonfire, something like that, that warmth, that heat that you feel given off, that is thermal energy. Another type of energy is radiant energy. So radiant energy is also called light energy. And you also talk about the sun having rays. So that refers to your radiant energy. And when we are looking at ener radiant energy from the sun, that is solar energy. So if you have solar panels in your yard or in your house, that is actually capturing the radiant energy from the sun that the sun is giving off. And another type of energy you need to be familiar with is nuclear energy. When we have nuclear energy, this is referring to the splitting or fusing of atoms. So splitting, that means we're breaking an atom apart. And fusing means we are essentially smashing different atoms together. That releases energy, and that is energy is known as nuclear energy. Now, another type of energy is chemical energy. Chemical energy is found in chemicals, and it is re released during chemical reactions. So if we are looking at a battery, batteries actually have two different chambers inside of them, and when that separate different chemicals from each other. But when you connect a wire or something to either end of that battery, that causes an electrical charge to pass along that wire that allows a chemical reaction to happen inside of your battery. So when we're looking at batteries, that is actually an example of chemical energy being released or, or being contained. Now, if we are looking at an outlet or a light bulb or anything that we think of as having electric electricity, that type of energy is known as electrical energy. Electrical energy is due to the movement of electrons. And we will talk all about electrons next semester when we learn about chemistry. Now let's look back at our potential energy. Okay. So potential energy, it can apply to any of those energy types we just talked about. So your thermal, your radiant, your nuclear, they all have different forms of either potential or kinetic. If we're looking at our potential energy, this is energy that is stored within a body, a body or a system. And we measure that potential energy based on its position relative to the Earth. So for example, as you ride your bike up a hill, and you get all the way to a top, and then you come to a stop, you have had to put in energy your entire time you're traveling up that hill, but now you're at the top of it, you're stopped, so you are containing potential energy at the top of this hill. Now, 
we are talking about measuring from our distance relative to the Earth, we need to think of the lowest position. Okay? We're still on the ground at the top of this hill, but we need to compare it to our stopping point. So when we are calculating our potential energies, you will have to think of how far have I traveled above the lowest point of the Earth. So let's look at our equation for potential energy. First off, we have a capital E sub P. This P stands for potential energy. So E sub P equals potential energy. That's just the way that we abbreviate it. If we have a lowercase m, it will mean almost exactly the same thing anytime we have a formula. What that lowercase m stands for is mass. We have a lowercase g. This stands for the same units that we worked with last unit. And that is acceleration due to gravity, which you now should know. The number associated with it is 9.8 meters per second squared. That is how much you will speed up per second that you are falling towards the Earth. And our last portion of our equation is h. h stands for height, or our distance above the lowest point of the Earth that we are talking about in the problem. Now, since potential energy is related to the height of an object, you have to use g. This is where our gravity comes into play with potential energy. So remember, potential energy, it's your distance from the surface of the Earth. So if we have gravity pulling on an object, we have to include that value in our equation. So we have to in consider, we have to include our acceleration due to gravity, which is going to pull that object toward Earth. So let's look at a couple examples. So we have three separate diagrams on this page. Up here we have a girl swinging. Part A, she's at the height of her swing. Part B, she's at the bottom. Okay. So when she is at the height of her swing, for a split second, she'll actually stop before she changes her directions of her swing and starts moving towards the ground again. Okay. So for that split portion of the second where she is stopped, that is where she has the greatest potential energy because she is the farthest away from the surface of the Earth at this point. In our next diagram, down here at the bottom, we have our little guy who is skateboarding. Right now, he is at the lowest point of the Earth, but he is going to gain height as he goes up this ramp. So at point three, he is the farthest away from the lowest point of the Earth. So here is where he, he is going to have the greatest potential energy. And at our third diagram, our baseballs, our lowest point, is where we're going to measure our distance from this from Earth, but we still have our baseball up at the height of its arc. At the height of its arc, it is the farthest away from the center of or from from the Earth, so that is where it will have the highest potential energy. One more example, just to kind of drive this concept home. So we have a guy, and he has climbed a flight of stairs. So this person has more potential energy at the top of the stairs than at the bottom simply because he has now increased his distance from the lowest point of the earth in this problem. So let's work through a quick example. You will have to memorize your equations for this unit just like you did last unit for blocks and acceleration. So, you are asked in this problem to calculate the potential energy of a 60 kilogram man standing on top of a 100 meter building. So let's first write down our equation for potential energy. Potential energy equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. So you need to plug in your mass. Our problem is 60 kilograms. You need to plug in your acceleration to gravity, which will always be 9.8 meters per second squared, and you're going to plug in your height, which in this case is 100 meters. So if you go and 
punch that into your calculator, you should come out to have a final answer of 58,880. But you always have to get that unit on the bottom or on the end of it. You have to label it joules to tell me that I calculated a value for energy. Next slide, we're going to start talking about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So if you are moving on a roller coaster, what you are experiencing is kinetic energy. So let's look at these same three examples we work with for potential. But think of them in terms of kinetic energy. So we still have our girl who is swinging. When she's at the height of her swing, remember that's when she stops for a moment, so that's when she has the highest potential. But now, when she is at the bottom of her swing, she is moving the fastest. So this is where she will experience the greatest kinetic energy. Okay, similar with this diagram down here. This guy, when he first starts his skate, or his rollerboard, he is going to be moving the fastest right at the beginning. Then similar with these baseballs, when they first go up in the air, their pull of gravity on them will be the least, so they will have the greatest kinetic energy. They will be moving the fastest. Now, let's think of this in terms of size of things that are hitting you. So which would you rather, or which would hurt more, getting hit by a 15-foot wave or a 2-foot wave? Well, the answer there, obviously, would be the 15-foot wave. But let's talk about why. So if we're looking at those two different waves, they both are made of water, they have the same materials, they both are traveling at the same speed. However, your larger wave has more mass, and that is why you will feel more push on you from being hit by a 15-foot wave. That is why there would be more pain associated with it. So let's make sure that this makes sense. Let's look at our equation for kinetic energy. So we have E sub K. This K stands for kinetic energy. And anytime you're working with kinetic energy's equation, it tells you that E sub k equals one half mv squared. So if you are trying to type in one half into your calculator, you need to type it in as 0.5. That will make your math a whole lot easier to punch into your calculator. Now your lowercase m still stands for mass, and this v stands for velocity. Now you'll notice that velocity is squared. This two symbol means that only the velocity is squared, not the entire equation. So keep that in mind while you're typing these through, and you're typing these into your calculator. Let's work through a quick example. On this slide, you were asked to calculate the kinetic energy of a 0.62 kilogram basketball as it drops with a speed of 13 meters per second. So let's first go through and write down our formula for kinetic energy. So once again, you will have to have these memorized for your quiz and your test. Our equation for kinetic energy is E sub K equals mass, or let me get the first part of it in there. Point 0.5 mv squared. So you will still have that 0.5 included in your equation. You need to plug in your mass you're given in your problem, which is your 0.62 kilograms. And you need to plug in your velocity, your speed. And we are given 13 meters per second in our problem. Now, if this did not tell you it was a speed, you should still be able to tell that this is your velocity simply based on the fact that it has a two-part unit. You still need to be able to use those units that we learned last unit. So go ahead, take a second, plug this into your calculator, and see what you get. Alright, so when you plug into your calculator, 0.5 times 0.62 
times 13 squared. That should give you a final answer of 52.39 joules. You must include that unit for this to be considered a correct answer. So this next slide, it says that at its highest point, the top speed dragster at Cedar, Cedar Point is 128 meters tall at its tallest point, and the car has an average mass of 1,000 kilograms. It typically reaches speeds of around 54 meters per second in the beginning of its travel. So what I want you to do is pause your notes for a second, and I want you to calculate both the potential and the kinetic energy of this vehicle. Okay, so at this point you should have tried these problems on your own, so let's see how you did. So if you are calculating potential energy, you always have to write out the formula. So energy potential equals mass times gravity times height, and you're going to plug your values in that you're given in your problem. So your mass is 1,000 kilograms. You're going to multiply that by your acceleration due to gravity, which is your 9.8 meters per second, and you'll multiply that by your height, which in this case is 128 meters. So after you plug 1,000 times 9.8 times 128 into your calculator, that should have given you a final answer of 1,254,400 joules. Now, let's look now at kinetic energy for this problem. So your equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So you should have plugged into your calculator 0.5 times your mass of 1,000 kilograms, and then multiply this by the velocity, which in this case is 54 meters per second squared. So after you typed into your calculator 0 0.5 times 1,000 times 54 times 54, you should have gotten a final answer of 1,000,000. 458,000 joules. So always remember to get joules as your unit for these problems to show me that this is an energy calculation. We're going to skip slide 17 and come back to it or talk about it when I see you again on Thursday. So let's look at this very last slide for your notes that we're going to cover today. And it talks about the relationship between kinetic and potential energy. So last unit, we talked about two types of relationships. Those were inverse and direct. So you have seen that as something moves in those other examples, when that girl was at the height of her swing, that was when she had the highest potential energy, but the lowest kinetic. So potential energy increases, maybe kinetic energy will decrease. And then if we look at this the opposite way, kinetic energy, if kinetic energy increases, potential energy will decrease. So you should know from those relationship terms that we talked about last unit, that if one thing increases, but that causes another thing to decrease, then this is known as an inverse relationship. Let's go back to that slide. There we go. So, if we are looking at a roller coaster traveling, it's going to gain potential energy as it reaches the top. So this is showing you that energy is converted into kinetic energy as it moves down toward the ground. So as your roller coaster moves up, it's moving away from the lowest point of the earth, so we are gaining potential energy. But as we go back down, we're getting closer to the earth, and the closer to the earth that we get, the faster we are moving, so the higher our kinetic and the lower our potential. So 
So this is everything that I need you to know by class on Thursday. Thursday we will keep going with notes, we will finish this packet, and we will do some more review activities. You guys will have your quiz over energy on, on Monday. Now, I know several of you are going to be gone on Monday for the band trip to the Macy's Day Parade in New York City. So, what I need you, for those of you who are in band, to think about is, can you or do you feel comfortable taking this quiz before you leave on this trip? So that would mean probably Friday before or after school, if possible. So keep that in mind as you're working through these problems. And then I will see you again in class on Thursday.